hi everyone welcome back to another episode of stocks all day with dr o'day today what i'm going to be talking about is actually how and so I, I had a couple people saying hey can you post a video where you know you just make a trade and and can we see the process behind you making a trade so that's what i'm going to do here i'm going to just i'm i'm going to pick a stock so I'm going to look through my entire list. I follow the entire S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ. And so, you know, I've got a big list of stocks. And I'll just kind of show you exactly what I do to pick stocks with my technical indicators. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you watch my five-part video series on how I pick stocks. But then this is going to be a really great video to just kind of see it in action. And then you can kind of also look back and see, you know, did this particular buy work out for me? Um, so with that, uh, I, I hope that this is going to be a very clear video. I hope you're able to follow along. And as always, make sure to hit that like and subscribe if you found this video helpful or entertaining. Always remember that this is not stock advice. These are just the trades that I'm making. You're more than welcome to do these trades yourself. However, just know that I am in no way responsible if you choose to do that. So here, make sure to follow along, and I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you all. So I just calculated up the amount of money that I have to trade with. is isn't very much today, but we're still going to make a, a good trade, but it's going to be $358.08. And the total amount of money that I trade with in this account is, is about $4,000. You're coming coming close to four thousand dollars at this point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start looking at my stocks, look at my indicators, and really the first thing that I'm looking for. I've, I I told you in that five part video series that I've got some little markers that pop up at the top of every stock here. What I'm going to start with though is just looking for a MACD that's below zero. So I'm looking for a MACD crossing that's below zero. So I'm just going to hit the down arrow and just kind of page through all of my stocks until I find, well now we've got a MACD below zero but the stock is also trending below its 200 day exponential moving average. I never trade anything unless it's above that. So let's go ahead and keep going. Again, I'm just watching right here. I'm looking for something below this zero line. And this is how fast I page through my stocks. I mean, it takes no time at all to, to find a good stock here. So I'm just paging through. Well, we do have a little something, something below zero. We are above the 200-day exponential moving average. Let's kind of now come down to the RSI. I want the RSI to be above 50. We're right around that area. But the stochastic indicator down here, the stochastic indicator is not signaling a buy at all. So we want that kind of down into this range. So let's go ahead and continue on. So actually this one, this ALK, you can see that we're on a strong downtrend. I'm going to go ahead and flag that for kind of my future. Um, that way I don't always have to page all the way through all of my stocks here. But if I see something on a pretty heavy downslope that looks like it might eventually be triggering, I, I go ahead and grab that. Now we're seeing AMC here um, is, is a potential buy we've got maybe coming up on a MACD crossover below zero. We're coming up on some RSI here, um, the, st the stochastic indicator here. By the way, I have no idea how to say that. I'm just going to say Stoke um, from here on. But what we're what we're kind of coming up against here is is a little bit of an issue. It's it's you know it already kind of signaled we're a little bit on the behind um, here. We could look at the four day chart and see if that that MACD actually crossed over on the four hour. Sorry, four hour, not four day. We did see a MACD cross on the four hour chart. So this is a stock that I would start to you know, potentially look a little bit closer at, maybe look at where Yahoo price analysts are kind of thinking about this. I already know AMC is way overvalued at this point, um, at least from an analyst perspective. Um, I do realize that, you know, we're coming out of COVID. AMC might jump up once people kind of really get out of this, but AMC is not a stock that I want to touch right now. But, you know, I just wanted to walk you through kind of what I was thinking there from a technical side. Um, we're going a little bit further. I mean, those ones you were seeing that there were some MACDs below zero. There was a little bit of a crossover, but with AMD, I mean, we're, we've been petering around in this little channel with AMD. It's not going up or going down, and it's it's kind of pissed me off in, in recent, you know, months. 
with AMD, so we're not going to throw into that at all. Let's see here. So continuing to page down, I mean, we've already been through over 20 stocks at this point. Um, so, you know, this is this is really how fast it, it goes. So, you know, we're seeing a little bit of action down here below the zero line for APTV. Um, not too much going on. So we're going to keep going. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and flag flag that one. That might come of interest to me later. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's go ahead and flag Boeing. All right, this is what we're looking for. So does everyone see how we're getting a nice little curve to this MACD? I mean, we are expecting that this is probably going to, you know, come up. And we do see some other kind of benefits, and I kind of flagged this one the other day. I don't, I, I don't know how I feel about Bed Bath & Beyond yet, but we're going to go ahead and talk through it, and maybe this ends up being the one that I, I go ahead and invest in today. So one thing that I like about Bed Bath & Beyond right now is we've got this nice line of support right here where previously the price struggled to break through that. It was some resistance, then it finally broke through right here. And then it came back, went back up, retested that. And so we've almost got kind of a, a double bottom going on here, but then it kind of went up, it petered back. So I'm not thinking that this is, you know, it's it's not necessarily an, an all out that this is, you know, the be all end all, but I do think that this might be a decent buy right now. One of the concerns that I have is that the RSI is not above 50, meaning that in, in the, the last 14 days we've, we've seen a general downtrend. Um, but it does look like we gained some support at that support line. And I had kind of proposed out a, a long position here the other day. You know, this is kind of where we're currently trading. If we extend that out, um, this, this, the stochastic, the stoke down here we're seeing, this is the slow stoke, by the way. Um, we're seeing that that is, you know, we've we've got some real potential here. Um, where the last time this signaled, we had kind of a, a pretty good increase on Bed Bath and Beyond here. You know, this this really might be, this really might be a pretty decent buy right now. Um, I would like this RSI to be up here. I think in the next day or so, it will actually get to that point. So I'm feeling pretty good about Bed Bath and Beyond. The only issue that I have here is where I put my stop loss. I'm having a, I had trouble with this the other day. Do I want to put it below the 200-day exponential moving average because that's where it might gain some support, or and probably the the more realistic here is that I would put it below this most recent swing low. Um, and that's kind of what I'm thinking right now is I don't think we take this all the way down to the the 200 day exponential because we can see we haven't really been hitting that 200 day exponential for quite a while. So I don't know that I necessarily want to take the risk all the way down to there. So now I always say that I never enter a trade when the risk to reward ratio is less than 1.5. So let's go ahead and crank this up to 1.5 and now we want to see is this a realistic number that we could hit. Well the last time we swung up we, we went above that and actually here in you know, mid-February, we also jumped well above that. So I think that it could be realistic. Let's see what Yahoo price analysts are saying about this. So um, one second, let's get away from YouTube. Let's go um, Yahoo Finance. So I'm just going to go on Yahoo Finance. We're going to search BBBY for Bed Bath & Beyond. And let's see what people are saying about this. So analyst price targets for the next year are between 18 and 38 with the current and average you know being right around each other. So to me this is kind of the the nail in the coffin. I'm not going to go ahead and buy this because one I was already concerned about the RSI, two I don't love what's happening here with analyst price targets. Now a lot of people say what do analysts know? Well, I can tell you this. They know a lot more than you and I do. Um, I, I just spent five seconds looking at this stock. They've been staring at this stock for months. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and at least say, you know, because the RSI isn't where I want it, MACD hasn't crossed over yet, the Stoke is also not quite 
into you know the range that we would want we want that to be a little bit lower before it jumps up so I'm gonna go ahead and say no on Bed Bath & Beyond for today um, again that's just my own call here I just don't feel comfortable enough with that particular one at this moment so the reason that I paused on Franklin resources here by the way I like that they went with Ben there the reason that I paused is it almost looks like we've had a pullback like almost a, a double bottom here on this pullback we might have gained support again right at this level of support um, you know potentially this is, this is gonna be one to watch it might take off a little bit there I'm not currently buying it though let's see let's see let's see well let's go ahead and put the bank in New York there let's put that into the yellow Baker Hughes has dropped Wow, I actually made a 2% gain um, the other day. I, I caught this right at the perfect time. I made a 2% gain in two days on that um, and, and sold it right at the right time. I, I snaked in there before it lost. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, that's Bitcoin. <laughs> well, what's happening here? Okay, nothing, nothing. And really, I'm telling you, this is the process that I go through every time I have some cash in the account. I, I just go ahead and let's plug things in. Let's see what's going on. Um, ConAgra, I mean, we might have a little... Wow, that actually... You know, there's almost a little cup and handle here. ConAgra brands. We've got the MACD crossing. We've got good RS, good strength here. Um, I don't love buying in right now. I, I almost wish I would have seen that and, and noticed what was happening right here. Um, let's go ahead and see what, what this is saying about ConAgra. CAG. This isn't, oh, CATG. <laughs> CAG. This is not going to be a, a typical buy for me if I end up buying, but I just want to see what's going on here. Yeah, so Yahoo price analysts, they were saying that it's it's right around where it should be, so I'm going to go ahead and pass on that one. That wouldn't have been a typical buy for me, but that might have been a, a little bit of a risk play. I kind of liked what I was seeing. Ooh. Carnival Cruise Line. Let's get some potential there. I like watching Carnival Cruise Line because I want to be a part of the, the uptick once COVID is is over but unfortunately I think that it's actually a little bit overvalued right now because people have been thinking that way for a while they want to take advantage of the uptick after COVID so Cerner you can see you know I wish I would have bought there I would have been would have made my would have made my money that I was planning there I didn't buy into Cerner there but I did kinda of, you know think about it I you can see when I have my old long positions on the graph here um, let's go ahead and take a look here. So this purple line showing that kind of that that MACD signal line is crossing below zero. That's again what that means. We saw a MACD crossover. We've got good RSI, but you know the stoke is not signaling a buy at all. So I'm going to go ahead and stay out on that one. Let's go ahead and transfer that over to a yellow. By the way, you might ask me. You you might be thinking, you know, what are the what are the green flags? I have no idea what the green flags are. I flag things as whatever colors I want on any given day, um, so I don't have a real system when it comes to that. So you can see, I bought into Charter the other day. That's been doing really well. I should hit that seven percent gain here soon if it can make it past that little little slight resistance we've got there. So I'm excited about Charter kind of hitting here in a few days. Let's see. Well, we did just have a ma nope, nope. That's not looking good. Okay, let's go ahead and flag that one as yellow. Sure. Comcast. I'm currently in Comcast. Let's see about CME. We did. We're not below zero, but we're close on the MACD. I'd be okay with that. But you know, there's not too much happening there. Looks like we had a little period of consolidation here. Some people might say that that's a pretty decent time to buy, but I'm going to go ahead and stay out. Well, what's happening? Nah. 
All right. Oh, this could be some potential. I don't love that we are below the 200-day exponential moving average, which, again, is that black line. I dislike that. I typically don't take trades when we're like that. But we did just find a, a large amount of support for, like, the tenth time on this line. Um, so that's, you know, some decent potential. Where's our RSI? Our RSI is... You know, the, the stock as a whole was oversold. We're seeing the stoke. The stoke down here is probably going to come up and signal. This might not be the worst buy right now. Again, I hate that we're below the 200-day exponential. I usually don't trade that, but let's go ahead and see. So, again, this isn't a perfect system. It's it's flawed in, in some ways, but, you know, I always like to see what's going on. So current price is at sixteen fifty three. The average analyst price target is twenty one. Um, so that's a lot of potential wiggle room there. Um, and again, this is a one year analyst price target, but that's that gives us some room here. So let's go ahead and see. Um, since I only have three hundred bucks, I mean I wouldn't be able to put a lot of money into this anyways. And I'll talk about how I pick my specific buys here or my specific buy amounts here. You know, this isn't too much of a risk, really. I mean, I can put my stop loss right there, which goes below any of the swings um, of recent swings. And that's a 4.9 loss. Now we say that I want my target price to be at least, you know, you're watching this risk to reward ratio. I want that to be at least 1.5. 1.49 is close enough. So when I'm looking at this, I have a pretty good feeling here that this is at least, I mean, I don't think that this is a stupid buy. Um, it's it's a little bit more risky than some that I might make. It doesn't quite fit with the strategy as well as every stock might. But, you know, I could very easily see this stuff starting to take off. I mean, this is oversold by the traditional RSI measure. Let's see what's happening on the four-hour kind of calendar. And we do see that the MACD is crossing on the four hour time frame. So let's just zoom out and let's take a look at what's been happening. I mean this stock has some big swings and it seems like we've hit the bottom of where the swings happen. So let's roll with this one. I like this. Um, you know we have a a pretty good bullish engulfing candle going on right here. I like that. I like what I'm seeing. I've got nice support. I'm not risking very much. I'm risking 5% here. So now let's talk about, you know, how I actually pick the amount of money that I invest. So roughly, I am working with, um, I'm working with $3,900 roughly right now. And what that means is, that I, I initially started with $1,000 and I've been margin trading, so I'm doing two times margin trading, so I was trading with 2000 initially, and I've gained about $900 in profit, meaning that I'm trading with about thirty eight dollars to $3,900, depending on the particular day. So I always say, that I never want to, in any of my trades, I never want to risk more than 1%. So I'm going to take 3,900 times 0 0.01, which is 1%. So if all hell breaks loose and I, I stop out on this particular stock, I'm going to lose a maximum of $39. So now we need to figure out, okay, so how much of the stock do I buy? Well, we just said that, you know, we're going to take a... 4.9% risk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do equals this 39. I'm going to divide that by 0 0.049. And what that does is it tells me a dollar amount that is the equivalent of risking $39 on a stop loss. So I would be investing $795 to risk a maximum of $39. Now typically what I do is, you know, Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. It depends how confident I am in, in the particular stock. Sometimes I divide that number in half. Um, sometimes I take that divided by two so that I'm only risking a maximum of, you know, 0.5%. Again, this one I'm a little more skeptical on. So let's go ahead and only risk, um, 
you know, 0.5% instead of 1%. Now we're actually seeing that's pretty close to what I wanted to spend there anyways today or the cash that I, I had available to spend. So now we're going to come over to Think or Swim. So this is the, it's a TD Ameritrade add-on, so I'm going to go ahead and just jump into that right now. You can see I'm currently in Charter, Comcast, um, DuPont, um, Callaway Golf, um, LLY, I can't even remember what that is off the top of my head. It's been doing pretty well for me, and then MRK is what I'm currently in. So we're going to search Cog. And we're going to go ahead and find that. So now we're going to go to buy. So what we're going to do here and what Thinkorswim allows you to do is place contingent orders. Where once the first one, so it says once this happens, then this happens, or this happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so I'm going to do... Um, 358 so equals that divided by the current price which is 1650 divided by 1650 so I can buy 21 shares of, of COG so I'm gonna go ahead and say buy 21 shares I'm gonna make that a limit buy at 1650 I mean right now that's about market price and I don't want to pay above that um, I always suggest doing limit buys. You never want to get stuck in a situation where the price jumps or something because it'll it'll pull back. You'll always get that. Um, you might have to be patient for 20 minutes or so, but you'll always get it. Um, so now we want to say, okay, I'm going to sell those 21, and this is a limit buy. So if it gets up to this particular price, we want to sell. So I'm going to come back to here and I want to say, okay, if it gets up to 1774, which is the top part of this particular thing we're going to sell so 1774 1774 we're going to say that this is a limit buy or a limit sell good till canceled that's what the GTC means and we're going to come down here we're also going to do sell there so I'm going to sell 21 of those we're going to do a stop loss we're going to make that good till canceled as well and we're going to stop out at 1572 which is this bottom line there so 1572 so what this trade means is that I'm going to pay a maximum of sixteen dollars and fifty cents for this particular stock this this Cabot oil and gas corporation and if it goes up to 1774 I'm gonna sell it for a 7.32 percent profit if it goes down to 1572 I'm going to sell it for a 4.9 percent loss so I'm gonna go ahead and review that make sure it all looks good it does we're seeing you know with stop orders there's no guarantee blah 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 we make sure that's good so we go ahead and send the order and now you can see that I have COG here and if we look at my filled orders we can see that that was filled now we see in our working orders so we can actually kind of pull these out and actually it's really cool um, if you download the desktop version is you can actually see you know kind of where your your stop loss is on this particular stock so this is how though you know we go forward we place an order and now I just need to see what happens I need to see if I'm gonna make some cash on that or if I'm gonna lose some cash and so the last thing that I do is now I need to come in and I'm going to open up my stock trading document and this is a document that I've kept with all of my trades since November I'm gonna go ahead and type this in I'm gonna say cog and I bought this on 421.21, and I bought that for a price of 16.50. I believe that was the price, wasn't it? Let's see. Yep, 16.50 was what we got that for. So I'm going to type in 16.50. I bought 21 shares, and I risked 4.9% and we can see now I can type in the current price of it so 1651 currently up 0 0.06 percent Woo! now let's hope that that goes up to seven percent or more 
Um, so with that, that's how I do this. I also keep, you know, this is kind of cool. I keep a, you know, a, a chart here that kind of shows my progression over time, and I like to see that going up. And you can see here where I'm currently at. I'm about I'm about 90% up um, on that initial thousand dollars. And you know, if you if you want to just see this document, I'm happy to share it with you. And you can see how I went from a thousand dollars. You can see every trade that I made to go from a thousand dollars up to 1,900. Now, when I officially hit 100% up again, I'm going to increase up to ten thousand dollars now that I have proof of concept that I really like how this particular strategy is working so with that I I hope you learned something here I hope that this was beneficial and again I'm, I'm super excited to share this strategy with you um, you know this is the process that I go through whenever I you know make a particular stock trade usually it doesn't take quite this long because I'm not you know talking over it um, but yeah this is exactly what I do um, so if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Always ask, feel free to ask them below. And with that, have a great rest of your day and support the channel by liking and subscribing if this was fun for you. Have a great rest of your day and thank you very much.